Okay, so for me, breakouts, really, they're just a, a, they're a piece of your team's structure, a very important piece. Uh, they're a piece of your team's success. It takes six players, and all six players have to be involved. All six players have to be aware. All six players have to be prepared. And ultimately, that's our job as coaches. And, and at Vermont, the University of Vermont, where I coach, we make breakouts important right from day one. It's the first thing that we, that we work on. And I tell our players from day number one that the purpose of a breakout, it's not to go score. The purpose of a breakout is to safely transport the puck from your D zone into the neutral zone, into the offensive zone. And I found in my history anyway, working with people from the highest level all the way down to young players, is that players often get slowed down uh, by clutter and indecision. So you need to have a plan for your players and one that you're always talking about. And the plan I want to have is to how, how you can play fast. How fast can you move the puck? How fast can you be available? How fast can you get that puck out of the D zone safely into the neutral zone, into the offensive zone? How fast you as an individual player can get back to the D zone and be an available option? So really, I guess a modern way about talking this would be you want to efficiently spend the least amount of time you can in the D zone. So we're going to talk about that today. So first thing to think about on your breakouts, on your reads, are what type of puck are you trying to break out? Was it chip behind the defenseman? Was it a hard rim? Was it a shot off the goalie? Was it a flipper? What was that? And then now your players have to get back and recover that puck. They have to recover that puck and they need some support. And if you can have your players coming back into the D zone, figuring out how can I be that option? How can I help recover? How can I help support? I think your team is going to have a lot better uh, breakout success. On my team, these are non-negotiables. So our players as coaches on my staff, we give them a plan. Uh, we teach that plan daily. We revisit that plan often. We adjust that plan depending on who we play and even inside the game. And at the end of the day, it's up to the players to execute. So we're going to look at a few things on, on, on uh, breakouts. So knowing who you're on the ice with and who you're on the ice against. So who you're on the ice with, what are your teammates capable of doing? Are your defensemen uh, great skaters? Are they great passers? Is your goalie, is she a great puck handler? Do you have a left, uh, left shot forward coming back down, playing on the right wing? Like all the things that you gotta think about as a player right there. You also wanna think about who you're gonna play against, which is very, very important. Is it a heavy four checking team? Are they skilled? Are they going to try to run you through the boards? Are they going to back up and give you some room and give you lots of ice? A term I stole from Mike Babcock when he was uh, generous enough to help me on my staff at University of Vermont. Numbers back, working from the O zone all the way back. We're going to see that today. Numbers back through the neutral zone, numbers back into the D zone. And you don't want anybody to return to your D zone straight-legged. First option plays, we're going to talk about these today. You want to get these pucks north fast. You want to get it as efficiently and quickly as you can out of your D zone. Uh, 